Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain about the hypothesis testing. The objective of learning this chapter are to test the mean when the standard deviation is known using the z-test, to test the mean when the standard deviation is unknown using the t-test, to test the variance and standard deviation using the chi-square test, and to test the hypothesis using the traditional method, p-value method, and confidence intervals. What is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing is a decision-making process for evaluating claims about a population. There are three common methods of hypothesis testing, which are the traditional method, the p-value method, and confidence intervals. For the traditional method, there are five important steps to follow. The first step, we need to state the hypothesis and identify the claim. The second step, we need to find the critical value so we need to find the value of critical by using the Microsoft Excel okay, instead of using the appropriate table as shown in Appendix A. For the third step, we need to compute the test value using the formula of a Z, T, and chi-square test. The fourth step, to make the decision to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And the fifth step, we summarize the results. Step 1. Start the hypothesis. There are two types of hypothesis for this step, H-NULL and H-1. For H-NULL, it's a statistical hypothesis that states there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value. And for H-1, it's a statistical hypothesis that states the existence of a difference between a parameter and a specific value. For this hypothesis testing, there are three types of tests we consider, the two-tailed test, the right tail test and the left tail test. So these are the three statements of hypothesis corresponds to the three tests. Example 1. State the H-NULL and H-1. Let's say we consider this statement. A researcher studies gambling in young people. She thinks those who gamble spend more than $30 per day. So based on this statement, we need to look at this keyword, more than. Okay, so the statement of hypothesis will be H now mu, which is the mean equals to 30, for H1 mu more than 30. Let us see the second statement. The researcher wished to see if police officers who suppose work in law enforcement have a lower score on a work stress questionnaire than the average score of 120. So for this statement, we need to focus on the keyword lower. So we can state the hypothesis like this. For H now, mu equals to 120. For H1, mu is less than 120. And the third statement will be like this. A teacher feels that if an online textbook is used for a course instead of hard textbook, it may change the student's scores on a final exam. In the past, the average final exam score for the students was 83. So try to guess. What is the keyword based on this statement? So the keyword is may change. So whenever you see this keyword, so we need to state this hypothesis H now mu equals to 83 and H1 mu is unequal to 83. So there are several common phrases that you need to determine the sign of your hypothesis. Okay? For step 2, find the critical value. So critical value separates the critical region from the non-critical region. So we use the symbol of critical value is CV. So since we have three types of tests, so to find the critical value for Z, T in chi-square test using the Microsoft Excel, we need to remember all these functions. So try to investigate each of these functions using Microsoft Excel. For step 3, we need to calculate the test value. Since we have three types of tests, so for the Z test, we need to use this formula. So the Z value equals to the sample mean minus population mean divided by the population threat deviation over square root of sample size. For T test, the formula is similar to Z test, but we need to consider the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1. And then for the chi-square test, this is the formula. Chi-square equals to n minus 1, which is the degree of freedom, 
times the sample variance divided by the population variance. And step 4, decision making. After we step the hypothesis, we need to draw the area of rejection and acceptance so that we can know how to decide either to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. So for to tell, the rejection region will be the both ends of this normal curve. For right tail test, the rejection region will be on the right and then for the left tail test, the rejection region will be on the left. So whenever we calculate the test value and then the test value falls in the rejection region, then we reject our H null. Step 5 is the summarization of the process. So we need to remember all this sentence. So let's say if the claim is H null, and then from the step 4 we reject H null, then this is how we write the summary. And then if we do not reject the H null, that means the test value falls in the acceptance region, then we say that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. Let us see this example too. Z-test using the traditional method. A researcher believes that the mean age of the medical doctors in a large hospital system is older than the average age of doctors in the United States, which is 46. Assume the population standard deviation is 42 years. A random sample of 30 doctors from the system is selected and the mean age of the sample is 48.6. So we need to test the claim at alpha equals to 0.05. So from this question, Make sure you highlight the important keyword such as older than 46, the population standard deviation is known, so we have 42 years, and then the sample, the T, and the mean is 48.6, which is we want to test it. To begin the traditional method, the first step is we need to state the hypothesis. So from the keyword older than, the H now mu equals to 46, H1 mu more than 46. And then using the alpha value and the right tail, the critical value is Z equals to 1.645. Then we calculate the test value for Z test. So the sample mean minus population mean over the population threat deviation divided by square root of sample size. Then we get this Z test value. So we compare the value of Z test with the critical value and since the test value is greater than the critical value then we reject the H null. So we can conclude that there is enough evidence to support the claim that the average age of the doctors in the system is greater than the national average of 46. Example 3. T test using the traditional method. A medical investigation claims that the average number of infections per week at a hospital in Labuan is 16.3. A random sample of 10 weeks had a mean number of 17.7 infections. The sample standard deviation is 1.8. Is there enough evidence to reject the investigator's claim at alpha equals 0.05? Assume the variable is normally distributed. So from this example, we highlight all the information such as the average number, the sample and the sample mean and the sample standard deviation and also the alpha. Since we don't have the population standard deviation, therefore we need to use the t-test. From this question, we don't have the keyword that show increase or decrease. Therefore, the hypothesis we state like this. H null is mu equals to 16.3 and H1 mu unequal to 16.3. And then, since alpha is 0.05 and degree of freedom, which is the sample size 10 minus 1, becomes 9, and to tell the critical values for both left and right will be negative 2.262 and positive 2.262. Then, we calculate the test value for t, so we minus the sample mean with the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of sample size. Then we get this number. Then you compare the test value with the critical value. And since the test is greater than the critical, then we reject the H null. So you can conclude that there is enough evidence to reject the claim that the average number of infections is 16.3.
example for chi-square tests using the traditional method. A psychologist wished to see if the variance in IQ of 10 of her counseling patients is less than the variance of the population, which is 225. The variance of the IQs of her 10 patients was 206. That's a claim at alpha equals to 0.05. So from this example, the keywords are less than 225, 10 sample, and then the sample variance is 206, and the alpha is 0.05. So the statement for hypothesis will be sigma square equals to 225 for null hypothesis, and then for the alternative hypothesis, sigma square less than 225. And then the alpha 0.05 and the degree of freedom df equals to 9 and it is the left tail from this h1. So the critical value for chi-square is 3.325. And then we calculate the test value for chi-square using the formula, we obtain 8.24. Then you compare. And since the test value is greater than the critical value, then the decision is do not reject h null. So we can conclude that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the variance of her 10 patients is less than 225.